This is part two of my interview with Razor Rays on moving and living in Cartagena. Cartagena, should I say. Follow along. Hey, you watching them on right now? You're watching DC Born Rub on YouTube. So basically, the workers that work on the beach, you have to pretty much sell them. Look, I'm going to give you this extra, let's like, say, five bucks. Keep these people away from me. Because they, you have ropes around your, your section. I, I want peace of my keep these people away from me. And they'll do it. They would like, you know, just escort the people away from me. Like, no, no, no here. He don't want to buy. He don't want to buy this. Because it's not just people selling, selling, selling. Mm -hmm. uh, you also El Aguito area though, that beach that's next to Boca Grande is way less uh, hustlers on that beach. So you would have way more peace of mind on that beach. And it's right next to each other. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, then you have the beaches that are near the wall city, near the clock tower. They're they not as populated. So you could go on that beach and just have a, you know, put a chair down and just, but there were, there's, there's not a lot of vendors there, places to eat. But if you just want a beach day with your family or, or, or like you got a friend out there, you could just go on a beach and just not be bothered with, with the people, with the hustlers, let's just say. Okay. You, 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 you gave me a, a couple of good ones I hadn't thought of before. Being able to pay somebody to watch out for you and say, hey, leave me alone, that's yes. priceless. I mean, I, I've it's been bad. to a few places, Guatemala, Lincoln, <laughs> Tila, to, to mention one where we sat there watching the water, I mean, watching the boats go out, beautiful water, and just literally every 60 seconds, not, <laughs> not exaggerating, every 60 seconds. It's like there's a line and they take turns and you go, no, no glasses, no glasses, no glasses, no glasses, and you try to ignore them. It's just too aggressive. And I've seen the videos there. But the other thing you just brought up uh, um, was if somebody is, you know, like those groups who come up to start rapping in Spanish and use your name or whatever. Mm -hmm. If you listen to the whole rap, it's kind of like it's kind of similar. And I'm sure they have it in New York, like Vegas and everywhere else, every major city here in the U.S. Somebody will walk up to you with their CD. Hey, yes. My CD, take my CD. And as soon as you take the CD, that same thing. That same thing is listen to the whole song. They got you. Right. Now they don't want to take the CD back. No, now you got to. Yeah. Same thing as listening to their whole song. You let them let them do their whole act. You right. I never thought of that. Yeah. Cut them off short. Yeah. Great analogy. Great comparison. That is the exact same thing. Cut them off short. Just let them know you're not interested. They, they'll get they'll walk away. Don't be intimidated by them. They'll walk away. Don't mm -hmm. worry about them. They, they're not violent. They just annoying. Like, like a lot of these guys, a lot of these hustlers are not violent. So don't be scared that they're gonna try to rob you. They just annoying. They could get annoying. That's the only thing. But uh, yeah, I mean, but you would have a great time. Like I said, I, I want to move there. I'm going to move there like next month, month and a half. So uh, like if, if I felt threatened, if I felt that it was not safe, there was no way I would be moving there. There's no way. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. So I'm always looking for safe places. Like, like I know you wanted to uh, maybe uh, compare, like I say, a North Coast of the Dominican Republic about the safety. Now, I would say that uh, safety wise, you might feel a little more safer inside the uh, north coast of Dominican Republic and say a Puerto Plata area, Cabarete, because it's a slower pace, it's slower, uh, and you don't really hear about a lot of violent crimes. Or not. And the thing is, if, about, about Cartagena, you don't hear about a lot of violent crimes in Cartagena either. You would just get like phone snatching, you know, stuff like that, you know, pickpocketing and stuff like that. You don't really hear many, like, say, violent in comparison to a uh, Medellin. You know, you don't really get that. But overall, safety, if you want safety, especially if you're an older guy, you might want a slower pace. Because Cartagena is a fast pace. It's a city. So it's like, you know, it, it's, it's right at you. It's a faster pace. You might choose a north coast of the Dominican Republic to go live because uh, north coast of the Dominican Republic, it's like I said, it's slower. It seems like time slows down. Time stops when you're out there. It's out of the DR. And not, I'm not talking about the big cities like a Santiago or a Santo Domingo. I'm, talking, I'm just comparing it to uh, a, a slower pace, a uh, uh, Puerto Plata, you know, a cabaret. Uh, you might want to choose that. But rest assured, there are a lot of hustlers and beggars in a Puerto Plata and uh, in them areas also that get annoying. Trust me. <laughs> so uh, it's just everyone's personal taste. You know, mm -hmm. I, I believe that Cartagena is a great place. Because, you know, do not let the hustlers uh, deter you. Don't let them deter you. Because, like I said, I, I live in New York, and I deal with a lot of begging in New York. 
You know, people try to hold the door for me inside the chicken spot. No, I don't need, you know, I can open the door myself. You know what I mean? I don't need, you know. You yeah, get, I got you fucking got space for you right here. Come over here. Get fuck your car right here. Exactly. You got guys in the, in the ATM. You got guys camped out. This is how bad it is in New York City. You got guys with tents inside ATM, inside the bank, inside the ATM area where you're going to withdraw your money. They just chilling and just like hanging out inside the bank. I'm like, what is this? Who are you? Like, I'm trying to get money out, and they, they're just right there, got the tent, they're just hanging out. I'm like, what? So, I mean, like I said, in comparison to New York, it's, it's a no-brainer. Cartagena is just way, way safer than where I'm living at currently. And this this is where your viewers got to uh, make the decision. Is where you are living now in the Matrix, a.k.a. USA, is it any safer than some of these other third world countries that we feared? We feared these countries for years. You know, we've heard about these countries are so dangerous and so uncivilized and so evil. Uh, hey, hey, do the research and look at what's going on inside your own city here and compare it to what's going on inside cities abroad. Mm -hmm. And then you make, not every city is going to be uh, crazy dangerous inside these other countries. Same thing for America. Not every city is going to be dangerous inside of America. Not every, not every small town. You just got to know for yourself, is your city any more or less dangerous than this other city that you want to visit abroad and say a Mexico or Colombia, a Brazil, a Dominican Republic, Thailand? Is your city that you're currently in, I mean, your own family members tell you, raise a raise, you are insane trying to move to a, a, a Colombia, Pablo Escobar, what, 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 what's going on? You don't, you remember? Listen, I'm ducking bullets here, right here inside NYC. Now, not bullets meant for me, DC Von Rock. Let's say straight bullets, straight bullets. Mm -hmm. I am ducking bullets. I'm trying to have a nice drink, nice food, sit outside. Boom, 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 boom. You, you ducking, ducking, ducking. I'm like, you know what? Enough of this. Enough of this. This, you know, we had to come to a realization that uh, our city is insanely dangerous. So either you're going to uh, take the risk and stay inside the city and you're not even doing things that are, that are dangerous for yourself. You're not inside the, uh, a gang. You're not inside, let's say, inside drug dealing and stuff like that. But you can become a victim just randomly out mm -hmm. inside some of these big cities, inside the Matrix, a.k.a. USA. And I don't understand why people are just like so like uh, crazy. They go crazy when you tell them, hey, I want to go to uh, Cartagena for six months. I want to go to DR for six months. Oh, my God. Is it safe? Are you going to be OK? I wasn't OK early this morning when them, when them bullets <laughs> were fighting on my head. <laughs> inside the Matrix, inside NYC. Yep. Like, where, where are we going with this? You know, I, I, I just it's a mentality, man. It's a mentality. DC born Robin. I hope that people see, well, you know what? We don't, I mean, I mean, I can only do but so much. I can only show them but so much. And people have to make their own decisions. And they got to just use their common sense. But some people are just so programmed to stay in the matrix. God bless them. God bless them. You can stay. Mm -hmm. You can stay. Yeah. Just for anybody, do your research. Uh, do due diligence on whatever city you want to go to. And like Razor Ray said, do the comparison. Check out a site called, and I just wrote it down because uh, it came to mind, Numbeo, N-U-M-B-E-O. And you can do comparisons on from safety to cost of living to how much does electricity and school and healthcare cost. Do due diligence. Check out Numbeo, N-U-M-B-E-O. And you can do Santo Domingo uh, versus Medellin. You can do Cartagena versus Medellin. Do the due, due diligence on your own before you... Don't just go and go, well, I heard good things about it. Or I'll watch some videos and I want to go down there. Or I want to go down there and blog or whatever. Just, I mean, travel by all means. I encourage you to travel. But let me ask you one last question. Um, okay. What, it, uh, well, what are the major, the, we, we talked about the, the, the hustlers, and, and, and it, it is better to call them hustlers instead of beggars. And there's a term for it too. Like my guide told me in Medellin, it, it's a term that shows they will make something out of nothing. But so we, we get them out there hustling and it's hard times and all. But what scams, what are the, the prevalent scams? What are like the top three scams that you may run into? OK, you will get uh, sometimes you will get fake uh, peso notes and, you know, they will get because they know that you don't really know. 
you, you're not looking at your your your, your peso note yep. to know if it's fake or not. You don't you don't know. You know you don't you're not used to it like you're used to looking at the American dollars. You know, so mm-hmm. you will get some fake uh, peso notes. So that's one thing to look out for. Uh, also, they know that you don't really know the conversion rate. So if you're in a supermarket, sometimes in that supermarket, which I had it happen to uh, one of my subscribers, which I was with from inside the supermarket. That day, he bought some things. It came up to about, let's say, twenty thousand pesos. Uh, he gave the person. He gave the person working at fifty thousand pesos. They didn't give him the full amount of change. Not. They were thinking that he wouldn't know. He wouldn't know that they shorted him on the change. And it happened a couple of times out there. It happened inside one of the clubs out there, which I don't really want to name. But I don't know if it was a mistake. The, the girl was very sad about it, so she was like, "She gonna get in trouble." So I'm not gonna name that club. But it happened inside of the supermarket also the very next day. And I'm telling my friend, yo, it happened to the same guy, the same subscriber of mine. I said, you, you just a target for this. I don't know. They, they, they would, you know, so instead of giving you the correct change, they would pretend that, let's just say in American dollars, let's say if you give a person $10 and you bought something for like $2, you're supposed to get like $8 back. They will only give you like $5 back. You know what I'm saying? But they know it's in pesos, so you're not really... You know, sometimes it's hard to really calculate your pesos. And like, if you're not, if, especially if it's your first time, you know, you got to get used to the calculations for the pesos and the change and this and that. So that's a scam, definitely. Uh, what else? What are the scams? Like, not let's say non-violent scams. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe watch your credit card when you when they take your credit card. Make sure you get your receipt back and make sure they charge the amount, uh, the correct amount on your credit card. You know, it hasn't happened to me, but uh, just make sure because that's a popular scam. You know, that's a that that's a popular scam all over the world. You know, what I mean, mm-hmm. if you're not aware, if you're too drunk, or you you don't really know the conversion, you don't know how to count the extra zero on that, <laughs> you know, on that on that peso on that receipt, you might get got. You know, what I mean, so uh, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, you 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 got a good one on the money too. Uh, there is a really uh, close similarity between a 5,000 peso and a 50,000 peso, a 10,000 peso and a 100,000 peso. If you're not used to the money, and I did a video on it, if you type in DC1 Rob and Medellin currency or COP, then right. you'll, and it's it's probably still close right now as far as the uh, uh, conversion rate, but that doesn't even matter. Just learn what the dollars are, what the coins are, what the money are. Save those coins up because they'll end up weighing about five pounds after a week or two or three. Depends on how long you're there. Those coins and then give it away to somebody who's needy, you know, before you go. Because it's, I mean, I mean, there's there's a couple of coins where it's like, wait a minute, this is like 0.3 cents. I mean, you're not going to do anything with it. Give it to somebody. Um, Another thing you said about the fake money, too, which is a good one to look out for. And this happened to my uh, my girl and her mom when they were in in, uh, Bogota is in a taxi at night. You're paying and you hand them a hundred thousand, a hundred mil or 50 mil, whatever you, you hand them and, and they hand it right back to you and go, no, this is not real. This is fake. And you go, oh, or this is even lower. No, this is a 5,000. I need a 50. You don't realize that they flipped it. As soon as you hand it to them, they had that five or that 10 or whatever. And they pay, oh no, this is not real. And, and if oh. you had a couple of drinks, yeah, saying, be yeah. careful with those different denominations. You're right. You're right. Exactly. I mean, a lot of people don't know because uh, they're not used to it. They just, I mean, it's the simplest uh, scam to get over with because a lot of newcomers, they don't know. They just don't know. And then they're like, ah, it, it, you know, it's not a lot of money. It was only $5, but that adds up. If it keeps happening to you, that adds up. So, you know, you want to you wanna know about your coins also. Sometimes me, even me still to this day, I don't really pay attention to the coins, which I should. But like, like you said, I just give them away to like the kids, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe uh, you you know you, you should try to treat that money as you would your own currency. Mm-hmm. Try to get it into your head to treat that money as your own currency. Because uh, if you if you care about uh, uh, getting scammed out of money inside the matrix, aka USA, you should care about getting scammed out of money out there. No matter if it's like three dollars, four dollars, or whatever. Don't say that oh, just a little bit of money, nah. Because you know it's just a principle, and they get away with it. Uh, consistently enough, they're going to continue to do it, you know, so uh, we have to band together as a traveling, you know, uh, 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 group 
and, 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 and put an end to the scams. You know what I mean? We got to tell each other about these scams inside our travel groups mm-hmm. or Facebook groups. We got to let each other know about what's going on. So tell people that's traveling there for the first time and look out for this stuff and don't be afraid to tell the bad thing that happened so we we would know and we could just get the word out to, for people to watch out for these things. And that way, maybe the cops will get involved. Maybe the cops will be looking out for it more uh maybe the cops are treated more serious if it's just like a, a, a huge issue too many people will be complaining about it and that's how you could cut the crime down as a group as a group of fellow travelers if we keep e- e- each other informed we got to keep mm-hmm. each other informed don't don't keep it to ourselves you know that'll be the best thing for us travelers in in the future you know because the more they get away with let's say the drugging the more they get away with the scamming of the, of the money the more they're going to do it, mm-hmm. you know, the more they're going to do it. So we have to tell the stories of if you feel that you were drugged, you feel you were scammed, we have to come on. You got to go on DC Born Rob show and tell him that you were drugged in the Medellin, you know, uh, uh, and he will, you know, get to the bottom of it and make it aware to the authorities and, you know, just put them to just look out, look out for it, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's, that's the thing that us as, uh, YouTuber, I'm a YouTuber now. I, can, I still can't believe that I'm a YouTuber. It's it's, it's surreal. I mean, <laughs> uh, as YouTubers have to get that information out. I mean, we just got to because we are in these places ourselves. So if we can get it out and keep people on alert, it'll be better for us because we're going to be in these places for for uh, you know weeks at a time, months at a time. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, yeah. I hate hearing about the stories. People falling on hard times and certain issues for things that if you just done a little bit of investigating, uh, it never would have happened. Be careful the woman you're dating too down there. You go down there, you're in a serious relationship. You met her online here and you go down there and look at what happened with Timothy Reed. Be careful of the person that you choose. And here's one question I didn't ask, ask you, but I'm going to put it out there for everybody. They know the three things I say you need to learn before you go. The three things you need to know before you go to Colombia or any other Latin American country is number one, speak Spanish. Number two, <laughs> learn Spanish. Number three, speak Spanish. <laughs> Do you speak Spanish? Oh, well, DC born Rob, you will be disappointed in me, Razor Rays, because Razor Rays does not know much Spanish at all. But I have a Google Translate on my phone that I uh, uh, use very well. I, I speak to it and it translates. But yeah, I, I, I am learning phrases. I'm learning more phrases as I speak to certain people out through the WhatsApp. And I try to learn because if I'm going to be out there, I need to be able to have good conversations. Like a lot of, I meet a lot of nice people out there that I'm talking to through the Google Translate. And I keep telling them, look, I really want to learn more Spanish so I can have a a normal conversation with you guys because you guys are very cool and without using this this Google Translate and that will enhance your trips also. So uh yeah I really am in the process of learning Spanish. I promise you DC going Rob I won't disappoint you next time you, you see me you're gonna see me talking way more fluent Spanish. You know I, mean, I always say you know I, I I'm still trying to learn English. You know what I mean? I, you know <laughs> I still need the, the perfected English language. But since I'm going to be abroad for months at a time, I really do need to learn Spanish. And don't even get me on Brazil. They talk about if there's a whole other language in Brazil that's oh. a little different than Spanish. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I'm trying to learn English. I need to learn the Spanish that they speak in DR. I need to learn the Spanish that they speak in Colombia. Now you're telling me there's a whole other uh, uh, version of the Spanish language inside Brazil? Oh, Portuguese, man, it is, yeah. Portuguese, yes. Oh, I can barely pick a word out of what they, yeah, yeah. It's, oh, God. The struggle is real. Now, now, oh, Razor Rays has been there, enjoys it, moving there, loves it, like a lot of people do, and they don't speak Spanish. But if you want to enhance your trip, it yes. nothing, and, and as far as safety, too, it's a big, I mean, because, you know, you can talk your way out of anything, but if you can't speak yeah. the language, you can't talk your way out of it. Nah. You know, you can say, don't rob me. I don't have any money, you know, or, or my, I'm a cop. I mean, who knows what you can say to get somebody off of you, but you can't say it if you don't speak the language. So it's a safety issue, too. True. I am going to step up on that soon, too, and, and make sure that I get some words to you. I've done a couple of videos in the past. I'm going to do one uh, soon, and then I have something else in the works, too. But you guys need to learn Spanish. You need to have jewelry that does not shine. 
You need to stay safe. You need to go enjoy yourself. Come back and tell people how much you love it, but you need to get back too. And that's another thing, okay? But right before we end, you can get there and have a good time and have fun. You let your guard down, you socializing, and you know, you wear your mask all the time. And next thing you know, you don't wear your mask, you get around somebody that's better than you, because think about it, everybody you've been around, you don't know who they've been around. So, and now you're due out on the 15th and you go to take your test on the 13th and you're positive. Guess what? You ain't coming home. You ain't coming home. I haven't had to try this, but I mean, if, I'm just saying, if you can get to Tijuana, you can walk across the border. So I'm just yes. saying, because yes. I just left Mexico and if something would have happened, trust me, I would have been on the first plane to, uh, to um, Tijuana. You just gave the people the cheat code for that, you know. <laughs> Somebody gave it to me a long time ago. They said, you know what? The border's still open. I said, wait a minute, it's supposed to be closed. But <laughs> the State Department site it says they're closed. They're not closed. They're not closed. <laughs> I'm talking here in, in there, and they're not closed here in Texas either. So I don't know about mm -hmm. Arizona. But um, anyway, raise a raise. Is there anything else you'd like to finish with? By the way, this is going to have to, because we got some good information here, and we're at an hour right now. I'm going to chop this in half because I want people to get all the information you gave, some valuable information here. So I appreciate you jumping on. I always want to learn more about Cartagena and I want people to be safe out there. I want them to travel anywhere in Colombia or wherever they choose to go. But since I focus on Colombia, I wanted to reach out to you because you seem to know the most about that area. And you care too, just they seem like I do. You don't want people to get jacked up, caught up, stuck like Chuck, any kind of way you want to look at it. So anything else you want to add before we conclude today? Well, I can just add, uh, as far as Cartagena goes, that you guys will have a wonderful time in Cartagena if you follow our rules that uh, I, you know, state on my channel and also DC Going Rob states. Just follow the path of common sense, guys. Don't do the idiotic things that you do inside the matrix. Don't bring that over there in Cartagena which will soon be my home because I don't really, like, I'm telling you these, this, these things and people will say, oh, raise a raise, it's going to invite the Matrix over to Cartagena. No, I want good people to come to Cartagena. You know what I mean? I want to chop it up and talk to good people. I don't want crazies following me to Cartagena. You know, I don't want that because I want Cartagena to remain a sacred place for me and good, just good, good brothers. Let's just say good brothers. Mm -hmm. You know, people that want to escape out the matrix, but good brothers. I don't want the riffraff. I don't want the insane, crazy people following me. That's not, I don't want a certain, so when I say that I'm moving and they raise a why are you inviting all these people? Well, technically, I'm not really inviting. It's not like I'm paying for their trip to come over. I'm just <laughs> telling them, I, I want the good ones to follow me, not the bad ones. Yep. I want the good guys, the good guys, raise the raises for the good guys. Mm -hmm. I want them to follow, you know, so I just wanted to, you know, put that out there that, you know, I, me, personally, I do not want the money throwers, the making it rain crowd, you know, mm -hmm. there, you know. So, or even if you go there, change your attitude as far as throwing the money up in the air. Go there and act like a mature adult and do not embarrass me and other brothers. Let's just say that. And not just even brothers, sisters. And when I say yeah. brothers and sisters, too, yeah. especially on my channel, I don't mean just black. I mean Spanish. I mean Asian. Exactly. I mean Korean. Exactly. doesn't matter what you I call all you brothers and sisters. Yeah. If you are going to go. But there are there is a certain group of people who go down. And how do I say this? Where they just <laughs> they just show out. And and I'm telling you, um, it, it makes it harder for everybody else. Such as so when we say we're inviting the good people. We're just asking you to act appropriately when you go. And, and I've done a video on that too. Uh, you know, learn how to humble yourself too and learn how to get yourself out of a jam. Don't go out right. wild and out. Like, and I've seen this in a few of your videos too. Don't, don't go out. You, I must have saw your last one too. Don't go out throwing your money in the air. I mean, I've never seen anybody do it, but I've seen some videos and, and stuff. I've seen it too. Yeah. personally. Right in Cartagena, right in Club Delirium. And these are older guys. These weren't, these wasn't young teenager guys. These were guys older than me. Uh, upper 40s and 50s doing that and I was just like flabbergasted and the, some of the Colombian guys that worked in the club they was looking like what's this what's going on like uh, you know why are the girls like acting that way because some of the girls are, like going to the floor for the money it's like, oh, yeah. like, oh my mm -hmm. god you know I've seen it personally in front of me 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. don't do that. Don't go out wild and do me a favor. I mean, I personally have not said the N word since 1990. That's personal reasons. I don't want to carry it on any longer. Not even by mistake. I haven't said it. Oh, and, yeah. but it, it you know, I, but people are going to say it. I get that. People are going to say it. I'm, I, and I don't care. But when you go to another country, don't say it. And you hear that, man. Yeah. It's bad. It's bad. It's really like, in the hood around your own circle, your own, you know, black brothers. Okay, that's one thing. Don't go abroad and say that in front of, you know, different, you know, races, cultures, because they looking like, why is this guy saying that? Isn't that supposed to be a derogatory word? You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's like, it's just a bad look, you know what I mean? And I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, I try to, you know, in the airports or whatever, you're around different cultures. So I try to behave in a way where, I'm respectful. I'm not making myself look like a crazy thug looking idiot out in the uh in, inside the, the airports. So I carry that to these other countries. And you know, you try to carry yourself in a way where you're trying to be a good representation of brothers. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you, you you try your best. You try your best. And sometimes you forget that, you know. Uh when we are doing these YouTube channels and we talking about how great these places are. We do get the bad people sometimes to follow us to these places, but it's really nothing we can really do about it because we're out there to give information. You know, uh, we are technically YouTubers now, so we have to get the information. But uh, we just encourage, even if you are a rotten apple, as they say, uh, 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 try to change, try to change. You can change, you know what I mean? Just because mm -hmm. you was one way inside of Brooklyn, whatever. If you fly out to another country, behave in a, in a certain way. Do not bring that. Into, prove to yourself, prove to me, raise a raise that you can change your attitude, your, your, your mentality, you know, for the better. If you are abroad, you know what I mean? Prove it to yourself, you know. Uh, it'll it, it just make your experience better. It'll it, it, it show respect to the Colombian people or the Dominican Republic people. Uh, they won't look at, look at you as a savage, which, you know, sometimes they be looking at it as a savage. Uh, and I'm just being honest with that, you know, you know, you, you want to kind of like not behave in a idiotic way, you know, I mean, I'm trying to be as a uh, PC with this as possible, you know what I mean? And just, but guys, I, I really do want people to go out and have a good time though. I really do. But in a safe and not matrix way, you know, mm -hmm. keep the matrix way of partying inside the matrix. You know, I mean, that's just, that's, and I'm telling this, I'm going to say that on my channel too, because people do be like, oh, right, wow, the Matrix is going to enter Colombia, this and that. So I'm going to, I'm trying to explain to people, no, I don't want the idiots to come to Colombia. I really don't. So I'm just putting that out there right now. Mm -hmm. For you <laughs> uh, you know, you know don't you worry. Know, they yeah. they are where they are. They're going to be where they are. They're going to do what they want, go where they want, yeah. no matter what so, we say. You know, you know, but. Yeah, whatever. It is what it is. We said what we had to say. Yeah. Yeah. We, we did our job. You know, after that. We tried. We tried. You know. Exactly. When you get down there, things don't move at the same speed. Don't be trying to press and rush people. That's not how it yeah. operates. You're in a different culture. And remember, you are a representation of other brothers, other Americans. And, and remember, you are a gringo. I don't care if you are black or <laughs> Asian. You are a gringo. Yes. When you go yes. to gringo prices, you will get treated as a gringo. You are mm -hmm. American before, I think, before they see the color. I never had a problem. And as long as I keep my mouth shut, I'm Spanish. As long as I don't talk, they would. <laughs> I speak a little Spanish, but as soon as I speak it, they know. And besides, yeah. I tell them right off the bat, perdón, yo hablo un poco español, okay? And then I go, okay. Then they more apt to listen to me because, and, and bear with me because, okay, this is a real struggle sometimes. And sometimes yeah. the accents, especially in, in Medellin, I don't know about Cartagena, I would assume it's Paisa. So you're going to deal with uh, that, the, the speed of it too. So must the spacio. Exactly. exactly. Go over some major uh, uh, terms. Must the spacio. Ask them to slow, yeah. slow, slow that down because I, I didn't care. I mean, I just left Mexico, just got back last night. And sometimes they were like, we, we look at each other going like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe we talk louder. And, no, doesn't work when you talk loud. So, hey. raise a raise. I appreciate you coming on, brother. Yeah. I'm telling all my viewers you need to get to his channel. There'll be a hey. link in the description. 
below. Please. <laughs> Can I, you bo- and and please. I need some more subscribers, guys. Please, please, please. I'm begging you. <laughs> <laughs> Go on over. Nah, I'm just just it's all oh, fun, man. I, I, I really appreciate you, man, DC Born Rob. I, I love doing this thing. This is just all fun, man. Oh, what, can I say one, one last thing about uh, Cartagena, uh, uh, any uh, Latin country? Guys, learn how to dance salsa, merengue, because that will enhance your tricks also. That's one thing. I, I, I'm starting to take some classes on, on dancing because uh, that will enhance your trip also. I know it's just out of the blue, DC Bon Rob, but... No, I forgot. That's, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's very important. That's going to be very important. So that was, that was, that was it. But, uh, yeah, take your salsa classes before you go. Uh, salsa you go. and uh, what's the other one? Yeah. The slow one. Um, Merengue and uh, bachata. Bachata, yeah. Bachata and, and, and salsa and merengue. And so, I mean... Yeah. It, 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 that will enhance your trip, like you said. I, I took lessons there, and you can get lessons pretty inexpensively, too. Yeah. Um, but then I wasn't dating down there, so I mean, you know, we're, we're, I, I still wanted to learn because my girl does it, and every time we go somewhere, you know, she can dance with a fancy guy because, you know, girls only got to get thrown all around. You're the one that's got to know where you're throwing them. So uh, learn lessons. In Medellin, you know, you can go to Dance Free. You can even dance free, hence the name, on certain nights of the week. But take those classes. You can do it for $10 $10 a class. One more thing. You don't want your girl going to another Rico Suave guy that knows how to dance and having a great time dancing with that other guy while you're just sitting there looking like, oh, this girl just left me to go dance with this guy. Are you serious? <laughs> yep. So that's just another thing, you know. It's, it's all, it's all, it's all good. good. Well, that's how I brushed up on mine. I, I, hey, I would like to be able to do. It. I used to teach ballroom <laughs> dance, but salsa is different from merengue and bachata and all that stuff. Yeah. To me, anyway. But right, yeah, right. man, much appreciate you coming on, man. Again, this I'm going to break up into to two, uh, two different segments because this is some valuable information, man. So, like I said, I wanted to bring you on to pass it yeah. on to my viewers. Hopefully they will go over when they want to learn something about Cartagena and get the updated news, which is important. If you want that news for Cartagena, this is where you go. This is your guide. It it, it says me. So if you watch my channel and you listen to what I'm saying, go on over, subscribe. Uh, Let's let's help him get his count up too. But more so than anything, get the valuable information. So much appreciated. Raise a raise. Thank you, sir. Thank you, DC Bon Rob. And uh, have a great time. Well, have a great time back in the Matrix. I'm just <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, while I'm here, I'm planning on getting back out. So I just got back. So look for those right. too for Guanajuato, Mexico, for uh, uh, San Miguel de Rayon, uh, Mexico City. Look for those videos to come out soon too. Again, appreciate it. Looking out for that. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right now. All right. We have a YouTube channel. Like it. Please comment and share if you like the video. Please subscribe and kick the bell.